Praise the Lord, everybody. How's everybody doing on this wonderful Saturday, June 26, 2021? It's a pleasure to be here again and to be here in front of you. I'm just going to give it a second as usual to see if people are signing on. And yes, we have contact. So <clears throat> hope everyone is doing well, being safe living holy, seeking God, communicating with him each and every day, loving God and loving people. Love yourself because you are a people. Hey, D, good to see you. Let's see who else do we have with us? Let's see. No names. Numbers are coming on, but the faces are not showing themselves. Uh, give a shout if you're on here. I saw Judy. Give me a thumbs up if you're on. My sister Judy is on. I'm going to get started in just a minute because I have things to do and I'm sure you do as well. And I have to uh, get going. So I'm going to get started uh, really soon, real soon. There's my mom, my beautiful family is on, on here. Good to see you. <clears throat> I'll tell you this. This message is, is one I believe needs to be presented. I guess a lot of times, a lot of things that I present in these messages may be controversial um, and kind of touchy or, or with a ticking time bomb waiting for something to happen. But um, just because it will rub some people the wrong way, I still have to present it. Good afternoon, uh, Betty from Macon. Good to see you. And I just want to say that, uh, and I'll probably mention that at the end of the message, but um, I've been doing this broadcast on this, uh, at this time on sat each Saturday, you know, for the past year during COVID. Um, but now that COVID is kind of uh, being lifted and people are, some of the churches are reopening. I'm going to um, reopen face-to-face -face, uh, church starting next week, next Saturday. So I will not be uh, conducting this broadcast on Saturday at noon in the future. So I will make everyone aware of the new day and the new time. If I may continue to do it on Saturday at a later time, or I may do it at some point on Sunday, but I will continue the broadcast. <clears throat> But I also will reboot the uh, Transformation Ministry face-to-face uh, -face service. So it's time to get started. So I'm going to open with prayer and say, Heavenly Father, Lord God, I love you. I adore you. I worship you, Father. I bless your holy name. I thank you, Lord God, for, for calling me and choosing me and, and using me, Lord. I just pray for strength every day, Lord God, not just for me, but for those who are, are watching I pray that um, they prosper, even as their soul prosper. Father God, I pray that they hear the message, that they receive it and apply it to their lives, Lord. And I pray, Lord God, that we will put ourselves in your will, Lord God, and, and to live for you, Father God. So um, give us strength, give us guidance, Lord God, and protect us along the way. And we do this all for your glory, Lord God, in Jesus' name, amen. So amen, everybody. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to open with a scripture. I want you to pay close attention to this scripture uh, as I read it. Pay attention to the whole message closely, but especially this opening scripture is coming from Isaiah uh, chapter 59, verses 9 through 19. So I'm going to read um, uh, the verse. I just saw where something came over. Uh, from bed. It says, praying for the victims of uh, Surfside, Florida condo. One of my ex-co-workers who lived there checked in two days and is okay. So yes, let's uh, send our prayers up to um, the building that collapsed and the things that took place in Florida. Uh, they still have bodies to uncover. So yes, let us uh, be mindful of that and not just talk about it, but let us pray for the recovery and the safety of those people. 
Um, so, okay, back to the message again. Um, this is Isaiah chapter 59, verse 9 through 19. Pay attention. So justice is far from us and righteousness does not reach us. We look for light, but all is darkness for brightness. But we walk in deep shadows. Like the blind, we grope along the wall, feeling our way like people without eyes. At midday, we stumble as if it were twilight. Among the strong, we are like the dead. We all growl like bears. We moan mournfully like doves. We look for justice, but find none. For deliverance, but it is far away. For our offenses are many in your sight, and our sins testify against us. Our offenses are ever with us, and we acknowledge our iniquities. Rebellion and treachery against the Lord, turning our back, our backs on our God, inciting revolt and oppression, uttering lies our hearts have conceived. So justice is driven back and the righteousness stands at a distance. Truth has stumbled in the streets. Honesty cannot enter. Truth is nowhere to be found. And whoever shuns evil becomes prey. The Lord looked and was displeased that there was no justice. He saw that there was no one. He was appalled that there was no one to intervene. So his own arm achieved salvation for him and his own righteousness sustained him. I hope you heard what I was reading from that scripture. Our responsibility as Christians go beyond um, abstaining from the deeds of darkness. It goes beyond that. We are also called to expose the evil that men do. Uh, to ignore evil encourages it. And to keep silent about it helps promote it. Christians should uh, confront sin with intolerance. People should see us helping those in need rather than watching them be exploited. Living in obedience to God is a testimony against what is wrong in this world. In the book of Ephesians chapter 5 verse 11, it says, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Failure to speak out against uh, and oppose evil is a failure to obey God's word. And those who allow evil to flourish to protect their own convenience will be held accountable for the end results of the evil they allow to continue. Turning a blind eye uh, to evil does not make it disappear. It allows it to grow. We cannot continue to treat sinful wickedness like the elephant in the room. The elephant in the room is the title of, I have chosen for this message for good reason. It is based on the idea that something is conspicuous, as conspicuous as an elephant can appear to be overlooked in collected uh, social interactions. The consciousness of uh, wickedness operates like this, but on a larger scale. If there were literally a big old elephant in a room, how could it not, how could you not notice it? It, it? it would stick out just like a sore thumb. An elephant is not something that can easily be ignored. Um, the elephant in the room metaphor can be applied to situations where people are aware of a problem, uh, but they choose not to acknowledge it. It is intentionally ignored. We are well aware that there are enormous controversial issues in this world. And by saying that, I'm talking about wicked, dark, sinful issues. They are obvious to everyone, yet people choose to either ignore them or they will tolerate them. Or they will promote them and they will even celebrate them. I'm talking about sinful things. People will do all those things. Um, these controversial elephants in the room are socially and politically uh, embraced. The sad thing is that they are also embraced in the church. 
what we Christians choose not to say or do is just as important as what we decide to say or do. We cannot have an ignore it and it will go away type of mentality. We uh, cannot just take turn a blind eye or a deaf ear to the evil in our midst. Just because it's not happening in our circle uh, or affecting us directly does not mean that it is not to be confronted. We have to have that voice. We have to speak up. Believers are supposed to expose the works of darkness by every biblical means necessary. When Christians oppose and expose sin, we are uh, to do it with confidence and boldness. We don't need to be afraid and we don't need to be scared to, to confront these things. We are Christians. That's our duty. And we are to do it with love. We are to hate the sin, but we are still supposed to love the people. Love does not act unbecomingly, but love does not rejoice in unrighteousness either. The people who are in the sin may not feel, they may feel as though that we are operating or not operating out of love when we rebuke what they are doing, but we still uh, must oppose and expose that sin. It is not about feelings. It is about righteousness. Unfortunately, many Christians do not have the discernment. They don't have the inclination and they may not even have the power to confront the evil in society. Some are barely able to keep their own spiritual and moral house in order. We should, as Christians, we should be so mature in biblical truth in obedience, in holiness, and in love that exposing and rebuking sin should be second nature. It shouldn't be something that we are, uh, are apprehensive about taking on. Christians must take evil seriously. If not, how are we going to confront it? Sadly, some find themselves laughing and joking about um, things that are immoral and ungodly. They would uh, likely never participate in those things themselves, but they live them out through the imagination and the action of others. And in doing so, they not only fail to be an influence against evil, but instead they become influenced by it. They become contaminated themselves and they think and talk about it without exposing and rebuking it. And if you do not influence it, then it may in turn infect you. It is as though we are living in a world of self-delusion. Everything has been turned upside down and inside out. Right is now wrong. Wrong is now right. Good is bad and bad is now good. Normal has become abnormal and abnormal is now normal. True is false and false is true. The true truth is that Everything is becoming anti, anti what? Anti who? Anti God. God says this and we do that. We are becoming an immoral culture obsessed with sin, destruction, and death. In the face of this growth spurt of evil, the church has grown timid and afraid. We have abandoned the truth of God's word. We have compromised the strict demands of his law. We now cater to meet the needs of a sinful nature, nation. And, you know, a lot of people, What I, everything that I've read and said up to this point, I'm sure a lot of people find it irritating. And they probably can't even go on listening to what I have to say. But it has to be said. We have traded our stance of, on the gospel for worldly popularity and success. So a lot of times we're going to talk about uh, things that's going to make us popular, things that's going to make us successful rather than doing and following the instructions of God to, to, make, um, to expose those things that are anti-God. God did not call us to be popular or to be successful. He called us to be faithful. Faithfulness to God must identify and denounce the false gods of this world that call upon our people to bow down before them every single day. God did not call us to tell everyone what they want to hear. He called us to proclaim his word. In 2 Timothy 
chapter 4, verse 2, it says, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. God called us to war against the host of evil advancing around us, around all of us. We have failed in this responsibility before God, um, and our country is paying the price for this failure. Whether you think so or not, we are responsible. You and I, we are responsible. The Bible is the primary source that helps us figure out how God's people should live, and we are not living up to God's standards. The very thing that prompts me to write, prompted me to write this whole message, the elephant in the room, um, is because of what I have observed going on during the month of June. Lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer LGBTQ Pride Month is currently celebrated each year in the month of June. Now that I stated what this message is, is primarily about, not totally about, but primarily about, um, I'm probably going to lose a few folks. But this is the elephant in the room. We have gotten to the point to where instead of opposing and exposing sin, we are now celebrating it. There is no way in Hades that this is pleasing to God. I am not singling out a particular group, but I am singling out a particular sin because we celebrate this sin. We celebrate it with parades, marches, rallies, commemorations, community days, dance parties, and festivals. To speak against this sin seemed to cause a record scratch for most people. You know, like, you no, know, what just happened? To speak against this sin can bring an uncomfortable silence to a room. This topic surely fits the, the phrase, the elephant in the room. In today's world of political correctness and permissiveness, there, there appears to be a thin line between love and hate when discussing homosexuality. Christian views have nothing to do with hating the people, but much to do with hating the sin. It is possible to love people, but not all that they do. God's creation and his ordering of uh, the world involves a series of separations. These separations include heaven and earth, light and dark, day and night, morning and evening, clouds and seas and water and dry land. Following this pattern of separation, God created human beings of male and female sex each having their own chromosomes, gonads, genes, and genitals to establish one as being different from the other. People will argue that homosexuality is not even mentioned in the Bible. Well, the word homosexuality was not even coined at that time. It didn't exist, not the word. When reading the Bible, ask, ask not just what it says, what does it say, also ask what does it mean? Leviticus 18.22 says, Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. Leviticus 20.13 says, If a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination, and they shall surely be put to death, that blood shall be upon them. You see, I read what these verses say. But in short, what these verses mean um, is that same sex, man to man and woman to woman, are not to be having sex with one another. You know, a man having sex with a man, a woman having sex with a woman. It's not to be, it's an abomination. Abomination. A, I spoke with someone who told me about a conversation they had with their friend who was born a male. Their transgender friend said, God made a mistake when he made me a man. I am a woman's in a man body. I can see how foolish, a foolish comment like this could cause God to, um, to have regrets about creating mankind in the first place. We can read in Genesis 6, 6, it says, and it repented the Lord that he had made man on earth and it grieved him at his heart. The transgender friend also believed that he was born that way. 
That is why he needs to be born again. Here is a proper response to the misguided friend's statement about God making a mistake. God plotted his story before any of us were created and the outcome was established in eternity past. We cannot affect God's plan with our sin. God saw that coming. Scripture reveals a holy and righteous God who is never arbitrary and who is never, ever wrong. God does not make mistakes and he does not adjust to our choices. It is us who must transform to God's perfect will. Romans 12, 2 says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And this message is not limited to one type of sin, but all sin. Sin is sin, whether it's homosexuality, whether it's murder, adultery, etc. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 and 10, it says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? <clears throat> Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor infeminate. And uh, that's like men being like women, and women being like men. That's what that word is. Or nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, com uh, nor drunkards. <clears throat> nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. So I'm not talking about just one type of sin, uh, but people <clears throat> who commit these sins and not, do not turn from their wicked ways, they're going to meet the fate and will not inherit um, the kingdom of heaven. So as we have already covered, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. God made the land, the water, the stars, the plants and creatures. And God saw that all this was good. The trouble started with people. People, we're the culprits. It is us humans who spread rebellion against God across the earth. In Genesis chapter six, verse five, it says, and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Wickedness has become the elephant in the room in so many instances. God's people need to wake up, open their eyes and their mouths to expose this large, obvious thing called sin that has trampled too many for too long. Every person who calls themselves Christians must speak up <clears throat> and speak out against evil. The church must be silent no more. We must learn from our past mistakes. Christianity has taken out, was taken out of government and the church stood by in silence. The Bible was taken out of the courtrooms and the church stood by in silence. The Bible reading in public schools were banned and the church stood by in silence. Prayer in public schools was stopped and the church stood by in silence. Freedom of speech laws allow people to speak nasty and profane languages in public and the church stood by in silence. Abortion laws allow uh, killing of innocent babies and the church stood by in silence. Silence in the face of evil is itself evil. God will not hold us guiltless. Not to speak is to speak, not to act is to act. I'm going to close with one more scripture. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 18 and 19. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou giveth him not warning, nor speaketh to warn the wicked from his wicked ways to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at thine hand, Yet, if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked ways, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. My final words, do not ignore the elephant in the room any longer. But most of all, 
let me say this. Do not ignore God any longer. That's my message. Please share it with someone. Listen to it again. So the more you listen, the more you absorb. And I just pray that we all will be silent no more, that we will expose and oppose all the evil in this world, all of it, not just one sin, but all of it. So again, like I said, uh, I'm not sure if I'll be broadcasting next Saturday. I'm going to change the time due to going back to face-to-face -face service uh, next week. So uh, with that said, you all be blessed. I love you all. Take care. Bye-bye.